Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, girls stop, stop talking, alright? Every time I do this thing, you fuck it, I gotta yell girls, alright? And I'm sick of it, I'm not doing it anymore, I'm not, I'm sick of this shit. I'm tired of starting the podcast and having to yell girls because, girls, because they're talking, alright? Welcome to the podcast, uh, my name's Lewis Spears, if you're listening for the first time, turn back now before it's too late. <laughs> Uh, how's, how's your week been? Huh? Boys and girls? Girls! Sorry, I forgot to yell it then. How's it been? Been good? I've had a great week, man. I've been off, I've been off radio. We got fucking two weeks off. Which is great. Finally, finally got some time to live my life, man. I've been toiling away in the radio studio. Trying to come up with fucking seven things every day to talk about. And it's, oh, I love it. Don't get me wrong, but... Every now and then, sometimes I'm like, I just don't want to talk about biscuits today. <laughs> uh, but having a break has been been really good. I'm just catching up on uh, on my real life shit, like all the stuff that you guys don't give a fuck about. What have I done? Oh, I've been going to gym, man. And I've I've started uh, figuring out a fucking diet because I've been spending way too much money on food, man. That's that's the one. I think that's the main thing that I waste money on is is food because it's easier than meal prepping and all that kind of shit is you just it's you're just like oh it's only fucking 12 bucks for something for lunch but then you do that three times in one day and it's like 45 dollars and you're like oh yeah but I only did it once I won't do it tomorrow and then you do that (laughs) because you're like ah cooking is annoying so I'm trying to figure out I'm trying to figure out like a, a a way that I can just cook for the week and then put it all in fucking um, Tupperware shit and all that. But the, ba- the main thing, I know I've been talking about my real life and catching up on my real life, but the main thing I've been catching up on is my real, real life. And by that I mean my pretend life on World of Warcraft. Dude, I've been smashing it. <laughs> I've been fucking thrashing that game. Hang on, i got to turn the fan on. Why is it that every time I do this podcast, I start getting hot? Man, you start... You start talking about World of Warcraft and all of a sudden I get hot flashes. I'm like, oh man, I've got to defend Azeroth from the Legion. <laughs> uh, I just, man, I've just been playing video games. I haven't played video games for fucking months, dude. It's the best. Just catching up on all that kind of shit. You know, I've been playing World of Warcraft since like... Man, I was in primary school. Grade 6. What was that? 2006. What was... What am I doing? I've been playing one game. For, what is it? It's 2018. Maths. My number one enemy. 12 years playing one game and I've never reached like the maximum level. Because I would always just start playing it and then stop because I'm focused on comedy and start playing it and then stop. But I've finally done it guys. I've reached the max level. I'm level 110 bro. And I couldn't be, I couldn't be more proud of myself. I'm going to stop talking about this shit because I knew cunts don't care about it. What, what, what did I want to talk about today? Um, oh yeah, the comedy festival is on, man. The comedy festival has started. I am not doing it. I'm not doing the comedy festival. Everybody keeps fucking asking me. I, if, dude, if I was doing it, you would know, okay? I would be talking about it, making videos, putting my poster out there. I'm not doing it. Um, reason for that is uh, I chose not to because my comedy special is going to be coming out in the next couple of months and I just didn't want to be like, I'm touring. Now here's my comedy special. So it is just to harm... I don't know, I'm just sick of promoting shit all the time, so I want to give you cunts a break. So, comedy special will come out in the next couple of months, and then you'll have another fucking break, and then I'm going to be touring in September, October this year. Uh, and then I think I'm going to be touring if from September, October every year from then, depending on how it goes. I think it'll go well, because I don't know, I, I don't know how much benefit I've gotten from the comedy festival, other than really fucking enjoying it. Um, I'm not sure if it helps ticket sales for me, so I think I'm just going to try and go out on my own in September. And, uh, I don't know, it might be a huge mistake, maybe I'll sell fuck all, but you gotta, you got to take risks. I don't think anyone else in the country is doing that, so I would like to try it and see if it's even possible. I don't know, man, I've never done a, com- I've never done a comedy festival in any other state. I've only ever done it in Melbourne. And I think it was really great to do because it made me be seen as a real comedian. Like, oh, he's doing the festival, that means he's a real stand-up. Um, but now that I've done it three times, I just want to, I'm trying to uh, weigh up the benefits of it 
But mainly it's because of the special, because I don't want to be promoting fucking 10 things at the moment. But uh, I've been seeing the best thing about not doing the festival, man, is I can just fucking enjoy it as as like a as a punter and just go and see shows. I've been seeing shows every night, man. If you're not seeing shows during the comedy festival, I don't know what you're doing, all right? I've been seeing shows every single night and just enjoying it because, you know, when you're in the festival... I thought, oh, this is great. I can do the comedy festival and I can go and see shows and enjoy it. But it's not like that because whenever you're doing a show, if you go and see one before yours, you're worrying about your show. Ah, am I as good as this? (laughs) Uh, What jokes do I need to do? Oh, he's doing that. He's doing a joke in that way. Maybe I could do something like that. Or, oh, that's an interesting concept. Oh, man, that's cool. How does he do that? And you're just fucking thinking as a comedian and mainly stressing about your own show, not really focusing on it, and then worrying about time scheduling and conflicts and all that kind of shit. Like, oh, i got to leave this guy's show 10 minutes early before the best jokes and go to mine and all that kind of shit. Now, I can just sit in the crowd and be like, ha ha, that's a pretty good dick joke. So I've been trying to see as many people as I can. Um, who have I seen so far? So far... I've seen Joseph Green's show. He was in Cooking Without Instructions, the most recent one. Uh, his show is really good. I highly recommend that. Um, I've seen Frenchie's show, which I really enjoyed. And I saw Auntie Donna last night, which were fucking great, man. I love I love sketch comedy. Like, sketch comedy groups especially. I don't really like one-man sketch. I think that's kind of weird. But sketch comedy groups are so funny. And, man, Auntie Donna's show... It's the first time I've seen them live. Like I love their videos, and I've met I've met them a few times, and they're really nice guys. But uh, I'd never seen them live, and fuck, it was funny. They've got this show called Glenridge Secondary College, which is just all about high school. And uh, I won't spoil it, but there's this one particular part in the show where Broden Kelly is just pretending to be a high school teacher trying to get the class to shut up and it's one of it it was like not even comedy it was acting (laughs) but it was so accurate that it just became hilarious like watching him it was strange every single person in the audience watching him be this high school teacher was like fuck that's a high school teacher right now and how serious it was just made it so funny so i really do recommend Auntie Donna uh, were great. Frenchie's show was awesome. And uh, Joseph Green, really, really good. And also, go and see some people that you've never heard of. Like, smaller acts. Go see people that you've never heard of that just read their show bio. And if it sounds interesting to you, just go and fucking see it. Go see a small comedian in, like, a 60-seater. You might end up having a, an incredible experience and seeing someone that really appeals to you without just being like, Oh, who's famous? I'll see them. Go see someone who needs the ticket sales. (laughs) Um, So yeah, as always with the Comedy Festival, all the boys are in town. So Frenchie, Neil, Alex Williamson, Josh Way is going to be in town soon. Everyone's uh, in the same spot, so we're going to try and smash out as many sketches and videos as we can. Uh, i got a whole bunch of bangers coming up, and uh, I'm going to try and get as many of the boys on Cooking Without Instructions as possible too. Uh, just because I don't know, I just want to I just want to feed Frenchie something gross and and uh, see how he reacts. Because <laughs> I imagine that'd be quite funny. Um, man, what what else have I been up to? Oh yeah, dude, I I'm sick of it, guys. Get my license. I'm doing it. I have bought five driver's lessons, and as soon as I finish this podcast, I'm going to book a lesson for next week. And I'm um, saying that on the podcast to make myself do it. So if next episode... I uh, oh, actually, no. Next episode might be the very special guest I've been plugging for a while. Okay. Look. If there's a guest next episode, don't worry about it, alright? But in the next solo episode, if I'm not ta- telling you a story about my driver's lesson, unsub. <laughs> Abuse me in the comments, because I deserve it. I'm, I'm doing a fucking driver's lesson. I'm booking one. And... Uh, just because I, it's just, I can see it getting in the way now. Like, it's not really affecting me, but I can see it happening. You know, I'm about, I'm about to go on tour at the end of the year. If something happens and I need to be able to drive anywhere, I will just be fucked. So, um, I, I don't know. I just, I'm, just, I'm 24, dude. I need to get my fucking license. I'm at the, I'm at the sad point where all of my friends, even Luke, who is younger than me, 
all of my friends can now are now on their full license and can teach me how to drive. <laughs> like before I was like, ah, only my parents can really teach me how to drive. No one else can. But now everyone in my life can teach me how to drive. It's pathetic. So yeah, I'm trying to get my license. That's a fucking thing. Um, also, dude, my channel's growing. My channel's growing really nuts. Sorry, not too much shit has been happening this week. I've just been catching up on boring life shit. So it's one of those fucking episodes where I haven't done anything interesting. Um, but my channel's growing again, which I'm super happy about. Like, Because uh, what was funny is is I actually... I, when I was doing the live stream, the Mr. Li Beast live stream, because the live stream kept cutting out because my phone kept dying... Uh, I had I ended up doing four different streams, so people were getting notifications. Lewis Spears is going live. Lewis Spears like four times in one night, and uh, because of that, I lost four hundred subscribers. And you know what? Fair enough. Fucking fair enough. I lost four hundred subs because people were sick of getting the notifications that I was going live, and they were like, "Who the fuck is this guy? I don't care that he's going live. I've seen this four times today." I don't want to deal with this shit. So I lost 400 subscribers and I was like, fuck, it was the first time in my life I've ever lost subscribers. I was like, no. <laughs> um, so I was freaking out a little bit there. But um, I don't know. In the, in the last week, my channel has gotten those 400 subscribers back and an extra 2,000 people. So my channel's growing really quick now, which is great. I mean, who would have thought... Hang on. Who would have thought that the key to growing your YouTube channel was uploading regular content once a week. I mean, I've never thought of doing that. Actually, I have thought of doing that, and I've promised to do that many times since I started YouTube, and I've never done it. But the first time in my fucking life I've ever been consistent and weekly, oh man, my channel's growing at 2,000 people a week. What a surprise. What I, I, I was literally looking at my analytics, and I was like, jeez, what am I doing right? My None of my videos are going viral. None of them are getting crazy amounts of views. How am I growing subscribers? And then in the back of my head, I was like, hey, fuckhead, it's because you're uploading videos. <laughs> and the algorithm is like, hey, this is a consistent YouTuber. Let's fucking promote him. So that's really cool. I'm very happy with that. My channel's growing quite fast at the moment, so I'm just going to keep pumping out videos. Dude, I got a great Lou review on the way. I'm not going to ruin the subject... But let me just say, I got a fucking banger on the way. Um, man, what did I want to talk about here? Ah, oh, dude, I've been looking at this Facebook data leak. Facebook is just really copying it from all angles. I read this article this morning. Uh, and the headline is, Facebook executive Andrew Bosworth defends the ugly truth memo. And of course... This cunt's nickname is Boz. B-O-Z. Bosworth. Hey, Boz. Bozzy. Bozza. You know they all call him fucking Boz in the office and pretend this cunt isn't ruining the planet by creating a machine-learned algorithm that promotes people disagreeing with each other because angry people look at Facebook for longer. Isn't that fucked? I remember reading an article before this one where they just let the algorithm do whatever it thought was best, whatever worked best. And it just started showing people shit that made them angry. Like content that made them angry, shit they disagreed with that would make them fight with other Facebook users because the bot realized in about two seconds that the way to make people engage with any kind of content is to piss them off so they'll fight with each other and hate each other. And then Facebook came out and we were like, so this is what we realized and the bot started doing this, but don't worry, we've stepped in and we've stopped doing that. And it's like, no, you haven't. Okay, you've toned it down a little bit for three months and then you've cranked it back up. Facebook sucks now, man. I've been posting less on it because it just, I just... It's like if I post anything other than a video, it just tanks. A link will tank, a text post will tank, a photo will tank. 
Like my Instagram will get more likes. I've got I've got nineteen thousand followers on Instagram, whereas I have like a hundred and ten thousand on Facebook. And my Instagram will get ten times the amount of engagement because Facebook is just like, hey, if you're not gonna pay for it, I'm not gonna show your fans anything you post. It's fucking nuts, man. And then, like scrolling through Facebook sucks too, because the only thing you see is fucking shit videos now. All you see are shit videos and fucking ads. And occasionally a meme. And it's like, dude, that's not what I use Facebook for. I use Facebook... Like, I want to use Facebook to follow... uh, people whose content I enjoy and my friends. And you never see your friends' posts. And now, I don't see any of, like, the music artists that I like or the comedians that I like... Or any videos that I want to see. All I see are fucking shit memes. And uh, videos of cunts having political arguments with each other. And it's like, yeah, dude. Like, scroll. I'm scrolling through my Facebook right now. I see uh, some, some dude literally having an argument in the street. Where are we? Where are we? We're going to be less Nazi. South African farmers, you know the ones that are getting... Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. Robbed, murdered. Oh, God, that's ridiculous. Talking about fucking Nazis, cool, man. Uh, what else do we have? We got an ad for... Why at... Dude, why am I looking at a fucking ad for Logan Paul's merchandise? Hey, $10 t-shirts, guys. It's like, don't trick me, man. I already know for sure. I bet if I click on that link... And I try and buy a $10 Logan t-shirt. I bet the shipping has been jacked up so he still makes the same profit. You can't, you can't, that's not a deal, man. I bet. If I'm wrong, I'll eat my own dick. Logan Paul Maverick $10 t-shirts. Where are we? Uh, Maverick by Logan Paul. Here we go. Where's the fucking $10? Here we go. $10 select t-shirts. Okay. Alright, this one. Black t-shirt with the low gang. Oh, why have I gone on this website and added it to my cart? Now, I know for sure that if I add it to the cart, I'm now going to get fucking ads all over. Ah, shit. Idiot. I'm going to start getting targeted ads. Hey, you almost bought this Logan t-shirt. All right. Bye. Please wait while we redirect you. Let me see. I'm not going to buy this shit. But I want to see the shipping. I bet it's fucking heaps. Jeez, what an interesting episode of the podcast this is, guys. Hey, let me scroll through my Facebook feed and read it out to you. Because it's shit. And then I'm going to try and buy a Logang t-shirt. Guys, this is the great content that uh, you can only find at Speared Sundays. Where? Yeah, $25 for shipping. That's not cheap, man. Fucking hell. I, dude, I don't understand how all these... um how all these social media people can just scam their fans and and just get away with it. It's almost like, you know what it is? It's because it's young kids. They don't even understand that they're getting scammed. If you show a 10-year-old a fucking rice gum video, he doesn't understand that that's not normal to have some dude lying to you about what he's done and what's in the video and all that kind of shit. Everyone's just like, oh, there's tits in it. I'm 10. I don't know why I like those. All right. What else do I want to talk about? Oh, yeah. So, a um, little bit of an update on the comedy special. Uh, so, at the moment, what we're doing is, with the comedy special, we are fucking... Uh, I, just, I just sat down with Todd, the cinematographer, and we are going through um, with the intros to the comedy special. Because, see, the intro with the comedy special, it's so hard. That's, that's like the what you see before the comic walks on stage. And they're so difficult because you don't really want them to be funny and they can't really go for more than a minute and a half, max, minute and a half max, 
preferably a minute, but you need it to set the tone and it has to be different from all the other comedy specials out there. So, I mean, a few of my favorites I like is I love the intro on Bill Burr's, Bill Burr's, uh, which one is it? Why Do I Do This? I think that's the one that I like. I wrote it down. Bill Burr's Why Do I Do This? I'm pretty sure. Um, where was it? Yeah, Why Do I Do This? His intro is so fucking good. It's on YouTube, actually. If you look it up, the first minute of his special is just him getting on the train and uh, going to the venue. And what he's done is he's clearly rented out an entire train car and uh because it's just him on the train and it's filming him on the train and you wouldn't know watching this for the first time but the second time you watch it all of the ads that are on the train are not real ads they're actually ads made out of quotes from the comedy special that he's about to do which is such a cool fucking easter egg so i love that part of it um i also really like patrice o'neill's elephant in the room the intro for that which is just him putting on a leather jacket and some rings so I'm like, oh, cool, that's fucking sick. I mean, that's what I do every time I get on stage. So that's cool. I'd like to have some elements of that in my intro. And then uh, I really love the cinematography and the color grading on Bo Burnham's comedy special, Make Happy, his most recent Netflix one. That's so fucking cool where he's wearing like the clown nose and the face paint. I mean, obviously I'm not going to be wearing face paint or anything, but I just love how it's shot and the ambience of it. So we're playing with a lot of ideas there and... Um, just working out a little shot list and I've come up with something that I really like. So I think it sets the tone. It's a little bit funny, but it's not over the top. No dialogue. It'll just be like ambient noise and music and uh, it'll go for about a minute. Then I'll walk on stage and the special begins and uh, I'm very happy with the idea that I've come up with. And uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm just very, very excited to shoot it. So hopefully we're going to shoot that in the next two weeks and while that's happening, Antonio is still working on the edit. So the first draft of the comedy special is just editing away. It's so boring, man. I don't have anything exciting to talk about. Indiegogo was like, hey, you need to update everyone once a month about what the hap what's happening with the comedy special. I'm like, nothing. There's a, all, all it is is a guy sitting at a chair clicking on a computer trying to cut it up. It's fucking boring. Um, but the, the intro of it is quite exciting. I'm very excited to do that. Um, and all that kind of shit. So, yeah, stay tuned, guys. I mean, uh, it's looking like it'll probably come out in May, which is a little bit of a delay. I wanted to get it out in April, but that's fucking tomorrow. So, or today, if you listen to it on Sunday. So, it's not gonna not gonna be coming out um, in April, but it'll be halfway through May, hopefully, as long as nothing goes wrong and nothing else gets delayed. I don't know. It's just taken a long time to to edit it. It's been a bit tedious, and then you know, with my grand passing away, that fucked up things as well. But um, I don't know. It's all coming. I don't have any anything exciting to say. It's all fucking happening. Um, oh, man. This is a... Sorry, guys. I haven't really fucking... I've done nothing. All I've done is uh, just hang out with and see shows and try and sort out my own life. Um, all right, guys. You know what? Instead of trying to fill a fucking hour when I've done nothing with my life other than logistics and World of Warcraft, how about we just get to miscellaneous bit of the end and uh, I'm going to tell you what you all want to hear, which is the update on the diaper guy, okay? Uh, now, before that, I before I do that, I've got one question. Actually, I've got a couple of stories from another paramedic. Uh, so, a paramedic listener. It's actually the same paramedic guy that uh, emailed in with a couple of stories, and he's got some more. All right. So, hey, Lewis. Uh, it's Leon the paramedic here again. The first paragraph is going to be information about emergency medical services. The second paragraph will be the story. Just in case you get bored with the first. Uh, you had mentioned you didn't know what ALS meant in your last podcast, and I'll clear that up. ALS meant advanced life support. In the US, only paramedics are advanced life support, while EMTs are basic life support. So... Basically, what you've done here, Leon, is you have told me what ALS means and then thrown in another three-letter abbreviation, EM EMT. I don't know what a fucking EMT is. I'm gonna, now I've got to Google that. Fuck. EMT. I don't do this podcast to learn. EMT. Emergency medical technician. So there's advanced life support and then emergency medical technician. I don't know what those are. Um... 
Only paramedics are ALS, are advanced life support, while emergency medical technicians are basic life support. So an EMT is a shit paramedic. <laughs> uh, when I say it's a big deal to take one of our only two paramedics in the county away for a bullshit call, I mean it. Paramedics are the only ones pre-hospital who can interpret cardiac rhythms. Interpret a 12 lead to look in... to. A 12 lead to look for a heart attack. Dude, you don't understand, Leon, how much shit you know. You're a, you're a fucking paramedic talking to a guy who failed high school. I don't know what any of this shit means. I'm going to skip past all of the medical lingo to, to save you guys the pain of me trying to pronounce this shit. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, uh, an ALS guy is very good at medical stuff and can save your life before the hospital. And an EMT guy can do many things, but there are many skills that only a paramedic can do. Why didn't you just say that from the start, man? There's literally like a paragraph of him, him saying like IVs and in, intubation and surgical air, airways and all that shit. I'm not going to read that shit. Just say, hey, paramedics are better than EMTs. We can save your life and those cunts can't. So, uh, our county only has two ambulances, so if one of our medics is busy, the county now only has one person who can do all of these high-skilled procedures. Being a rural area com complicates things further as you could be very far from a hospital. I don't know how Australia's EMS system is up, is set up, but in the US, our pre-hospital ambulance levels are far f are from lowest to highest. EMT basic, blah, blah. Yeah, you're just saying shit, man. I couldn't tell you how our, uh, ho how our hospital systems are or paramedic systems are because I wouldn't understand it because I don't understand what the fuck you said so I don't know what I'm comparing it to but I can say the main difference is if an ambulance comes to our house we don't go broke and the hospital probably won't kick us out if we can't afford to pay the bill because our medical healthcare system isn't fucking retarded <laughs> like America's oh what's that you can't afford to fix your, your heart attack well enjoy that shit I ain't gonna save you or, I will save you, but you're going to have to sell your house. <laughs> uh, for the potentially funny story, I was once dispatched for a woman who was having severe vaginal issues. <laughs> Here we go, boys. This is some shit I understand. My partner and I headed to the call and wondered what the fuck that meant. Oh, so that's what you were told. Dude, imagine dialing 911. 911, what's your emergency? I'm having severe vaginal issues. <laughs> Once we arrived, the first responders walked up to us and apologized for what was to come. Uh, as we walked up to the house, the patient's husband was crying in the yard as he said his wife, the patient, had become very angry and, sh and thrown his keys out into the darkness so he could not leave. As we, walked up to the porch, as we walked up the porch steps, we heard shrill screaming from inside the resident. Once we entered the living room, we found the patient sitting on her couch screaming at the first responders that her vagina was caved in and she couldn't do anything about it. Wait, isn't that what a vagina is? A cave? I mean, cave is not the be not the most positive word to use, but it kind of, it's a hole. Isn't that what it's supposed to be? Her vagina was caved in, couldn't do anything about it. I took a moment to walk outside and laugh. <laughs> Composed myself and then came back in. And dude, you know, I know this cunt. Leon was like, oh, excuse me, miss. I just need to check my notes. And he went out the, the wall, went out the door, was like, ah, <laughs> her pussy's inside out. What a fucking idiot. Woohoo! Had a laugh with the boys and then was like, <sighs> all right, I'm now a doctor. All right, miss, uh... May I inspect that pussy? I took a moment to walk outside and laugh, composed myself and then came back in. My partner was trying to calm the patient down, but she was very drunk and that wasn't going to happen. After arguing with the patient for a while, my partner informed informed the patient that we were going to need to see her vagina and figure out what we, what we were dealing with. The patient then went from mad to furious. She quickly stood up, pulled her pants down, laid down on the couch with her legs spread wide and screamed, Here's your fucking show! <laughs> While wildly rubbing her vagina with her fingers. Her vagina had a weird egg-shaped lump, my professional field diagnosis, inside of it that was red and inflamed. We were on scene for roughly an hour before the patient agreed to go to hospital. The
The last time I saw the patient, she was telling the nursing staff that she wasn't waiting for a portable toilet. She didn't care that they needed a urine sample. And then she pissed herself on purpose, making sure to shake her legs so the urine got all over, over the floor and bed. That's my second story. Have a shitter one than that kind of bitch's husband. Yeah, fuck. Oh, well, I want to know what happened. See, that'd be the worst part about being a paramedic, is if you ever get a fucked up call, you get them to hospital, and do you, I, I'm guessing you just don't hear what happened. You never hear the resolution. Like, oh, did that guy die? He was alive when I gave him to you. Oh, his head pussy, the, in, the right way in again? When, last time I saw it, it was fucking inside out. Man. All right, guys. Time for the fucking update for the for the poor listener who has a girlfriend with a diaper fetish. Uh, quick recap. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll do a quick recap, but if you haven't heard last episode with Luke and Mike, go and listen to it. Just skip to miscellaneous bit at the end. I Generally, I don't recommend listening to miscellaneous bit at the end, but this one you have to, okay? This is the one miscellaneous bit at the end that I highly recommend you listen to because... Fuck, man. It's just a great yarn. So this guy, uh, quick recap, he found out he's got a 10 out of 10 girlfriend, can't believe that he's with her, so gorgeous, out of his league, and then he finds out that she has a diaper fetish where she wants him to force her to wear a diaper until she shits herself and then fuck her in it. And this is the result. And then, he, so basically, he gave it a go with just a wee, He's like, alright, you wee in it, I'll fuck you with it. He hated it. Uh, but what's even worse than that, he locked up the diapers in his uh, in his bedside table. Then his mum found the key, unlocked it, unlocked it, found the diapers, and now thinks that he is having bladder problems, and he doesn't know what to say. And uh, we posted about this in the group, the Speared Sundays podcast group. Look it up on Facebook. It's the only good thing about Facebook at the moment, is the podcast group. Where are we? I just want to look up. We had a whole bunch of... Uh, we had a poll, actually, of what should this guy do. Because I had no fucking idea. Oh, man. My internet sucks, dude. Can't even load a fucking... Fa- I'll get it on my phone. Uh, all right. Spearhead Sunday's Facebook group. Look, while I'm looking for the group, why don't you cunts fucking look it up and join it, all right? Spearhead Sunday's... Podcast group. Here we go. All right. So we had, uh, d- during last last week's episode, we had the remarkable quote from Luke Kidgel, mark my words, I will never come in a piss. Uh, and that photo, fuck, I, that photo that someone made of it almost made me cry, man. It's like a motivational image of Luke in the clouds with mark my words, I would never come in a piss. And him looking like an angel. Man, I almost cried. All right. So we had an open poll. Uh, What should the diaper guy do? Top result. uh, My name, Jeff. Thank you very much. I mean, I don't know why I'm disappointed. That's the one that I voted for. (laughs) Because I had no idea. I was like, yeah, my name, Jeff. All right. Second one. Tell his mother to refer to this week's episode of Spearhead Sundays. I mean, yeah, that's not a bad thing. Tell his mum I cummed in a piss was number three. (laughs) Number four. Which I think is probably the most reasonable one. Leave the continent. Uh, tell his mum that she is gay. And the the, the only other good uh, actual the only other good um, answer I see is uh, tell his mum his girlfriend has a bladder issue slash the Hiroshima of periods, and that's what the diapers are for. That's not a bad that's not a bad fucking thing. Um, all right, but here's the update, guys. Good news, things worked out. First, first of all, also there was a comment. First of all, uh, I would like to point out how Matt correctly pointed out in the podcast Facebook group comment section. This dude is in the group somewhere, and uh, yes, he is. I, uh, I mean, the guy's name for the, for the all intents and purposes is Tyler, but because I have his email, I've got his real name, and he is in the group, and uh, I know who he is. And I will never reveal that information because if you want to be anonymous on this podcast, you're staying anonymous. But yes, Matt was right. This guy is in the Speared Sundays podcast group somewhere. So I don't know. Maybe join the group and try and figure out who the guy is. 
Yes, I am in the group, and I checked the poll on what I'm supposed to do. For the record, I did not say to my mum that my name Jeff, she gay, or that I come to a piss. Instead, a girl in the comment section suggested that I should say my girlfriend has a bladder infection. This is actually really good advice because it's quite cold where I live and bladder infections are not uncommon with teenage girls. So that's what I told my mum and she ended up being very understanding about it and even gave me the diaper money back. From now on, it's Sarah's responsibility to get the diapers and hide them at hers. I would like to thank the community for helping out a fellow nerd. Come in a piss, Tyler. Wait. Oh, this dude's gonna do it! From now on, it's Sarah's responsibility to get the diapers and hide them in hers. Oh, so you're... <laughs> so you're just like... So he's just like, oh, I'm just gonna continue on. I thought the main question was... Do I stay with this girl and how do I tell her that I don't enjoy the fetish? But he was just embarrassed about his mum finding the diapers. So now he's just gonna... Fuck his girlfriend, shitty pussy. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so looks like looks like that's the resolution, boys and girls. Is uh, Tyler's just gonna keep coming in a piss? Well, extra pissy pussy for my savage. <laughs> I don't know. More power to you, Tyler. If you if you're enjoying it, keep on coming in that piss, man. Fucking hell. That's insane, man. The shit I find out, literally, with this podcast. All right. If you would like to send me uh, uh, an email, if you've got a life advice question, if you've got a cool story, if you've got a, if you've got a weird job and you've got any stories from there or vandalism stories, any you know you can't know what I like. If you need some life advice, send in a, send an email to podcast at loosespears.com. Use a fake name if you need to, whatever, and I will, uh, if I think I can make it funny or it's an interesting story, I'll read it out on the next episode. Uh, also, if you would like to support what I'm doing, support the podcast and my videos and everything and help me, you know, stop breaking even on them, consider supporting me on Patreon. You get early access to everything I upload, you get cheaper tickets to my live shows, you get free posters, free merch, there's a bunch of different rewards. Check it out, just Google Lewis Spears Patreon. There's a bunch of rewards. I'm actually going to revamp the Patreon thing with some new rewards and shit um, and just update it because I haven't updated it since I started it a few years ago. So <clears throat> check that out if you want to help me continue what I'm doing and uh, rate me on iTunes, all that kind of shit. And uh, check me, just Google Lewis Spears Crowdfund if you want to see the latest update. I wrote a big post about it on the Indiegogo page. All right. That's all the uh, housekeeping I needed to do. Also, go and see some shows during the comedy festival. See some people you've never heard of. I recommend Frenchie, uh, uh, Joseph Green, Auntie Donna, and I'll have some more recommendations for you later. And also, hopefully, I'm thinking next episode will be the very special guest that I've been trying to get on for a while. Um, uh, a lot of you people have been guessing. A lot of, a lot of big guesses, but uh, no one's been close yet. I think it'll surprise you, and I'm very excited about it. All right? Hopefully, that'll be next episode. It might not be, because we've already rescheduled it three times. So, thanks for listening, guys. That's the end of the podcast. Sorry this one. I don't know. I just didn't do anything this weekend, uh, this week, but uh, I'll have some more stories next week. All right? Thanks for listening. Have a shit one. Talk to you next Sunday.